carbon emissions from the global SUV fleet. You know all those big SUVs you see driving around? Put them all together. They make up more than most countries. More than most countries pollute in an entire year from all sources of pollution. They're really that bad. Actually, they might even be worse. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you so much for supporting my GoFundMe campaign for my wife, who has stage four cancer. Really appreciate that. Thank you to everyone. I'll put a link in the description below to her GoFundMe page. Popularity of SUVs has skyrocketed over the past decade, and the continued global rise in sales of SUVs has pushed their climate heating emissions to almost 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide in 2022. 1 billion tons, according to the International Energy Agency. Now, I shouldn't be laughing about that because it's crazy. It's actually way worse than it sounds. Why do I say that? Because emissions from petrol and diesel, gas and diesel powered cars are killing us. They're killing around 6 million people per year. That is terrible. We don't even talk about this. The media just ignores it. The media pretends it's not happening, but it is. There are 330 million SUVs currently driving on the roads produced emissions equivalent to the combined national emissions of the United Kingdom and Germany last year. Put those two countries together, two of the biggest, most industrialized countries in the world. And that's about the same amount of pollution we're seeing just from SUVs alone. If SUVs were a country, they would rank as the sixth most polluting country in the world. Wow. Climate campaigners are increasingly concerned about the impact of SUVs for good reason. The activist group Tire Extinguishers said it had deflated the tires of hundreds of SUVs in Europe. And it's also done the same thing in other places like in the United States. When I say deflating the tires, they often will slash tires. Now, I don't condone that at all. In fact, I strongly disagree with that. I don't believe that's helping anyone. If anything, it's doing the opposite. But you can see why they're angry. The vehicles are larger and heavier than regular cars, in some cases twice the weight, twice the size. And they use on average around 30% more fuel. The increased number of SUVs in 2022 was responsible for a third of the increase in global oil demand. If only those SUVs were electric, that figure wouldn't exist. Purchases of SUVs have soared in the last few years. They've become so popular that companies are now focusing on them entirely, almost as a business model. They've risen from 20% of new cars in 2012 to nearly 50% of all cars worldwide last year. This rise continued in 2022, including significant growth in the US, India, and Europe, despite the overall number of cars sold falling slightly. SUV's popularity is showing no signs whatsoever of slowing down. One in six SUVs sold in 2022 was electric. But the IEA experts said electric SUVs are growing in popularity, but not quickly enough to offset the increasing oil consumption and emissions of the wider fleet. Electric SUVs require larger batteries to power them, so a growing electric SUV market will impose additional pressure on battery supply chains and further increase demand for the critical minerals needed to make the batteries. Cities targeted by tire extinguisher groups on Monday included London, Paris, Berlin, and Milan. The activists claim to have deflated more than 10,000 tires in the past year in 17 countries, including the United States and New Zealand, using lentils to jam open air valves. A spokesperson for this movement said, things were quiet over the winter, but we are now emerging ready for another year of lentil-based action. We act because politicians will not even take baby steps to make our streets and climate safe. We won't stop until these polluting vehicles are history. Now, while I disagree with what they're doing, I understand why they're doing it, because it is true that SUVs and gasoline powered cars are killing us. And it is true the media is ignoring this is happening. It's worse than COVID. That's true, that's a fact, you cannot deny that. And we're pretending as though it's just not even relevant. However, I don't agree that countries and governments are doing nothing. They are, many countries and many governments are encouraging electric car adoption. And they are encouraging it through incentives and through different measures to support electric vehicle growth. I don't agree with this whole absolutist mindset of these people, of these activists saying that 
no one's doing anything because they are. And yes, EVs are definitely taking over. The next 12 months, we'll see an incredible onslaught of electric car adoption. This is an unstoppable movement. I think these activists will be better to focus on how they can support that movement and how they can grow the movement of electric cars and of renewable energy as well. Now, the tire extinguisher said they wanted bans on SUVs in urban areas, pollution levies to tax SUVs out of existence, and massive investments in free comprehensive public transport. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know what you think. Electric car sales soared in 2022, rising by 60% from 2021 to more than 10 million vehicles. However, 29 million non-electric SUVs were sold. Iris, Julia Poliskanova, Senior Director for Vehicles and E-Mobility at European Campaign Group Transport and Environment said this, car makers are culling small cars in pursuit of profit. Volkswagen, Stellantis and BMW have all said they're moving towards selling fewer cars and focusing on more premium SUV models, but larger cars put more pressure on the planet. And the truth is right now, I mean, even those companies who are actually leading in terms of European electric car sales alongside Tesla, still more than 90% of the cars they're selling are gasoline powered. For drivers, this means more expensive models, she said, and higher running costs, especially at a time of high energy prices. Given the stakes, regulators should ensure European small cars don't disappear. The best way is to tax big cars. Subsidies for electric cars should support entry-level EVs that are made in Europe. In 2021, the UK's National Audit Office reported that rising sales of SUVs and an increase in road traffic had cancelled out reductions in CO2 emissions from electric car sales. I don't think we should really necessarily support one type of car over another. Maybe, let me know your thoughts. What I think that we should support doing is what some countries are doing now, what France is doing now. Get people out of a car, get them onto a bike, get them onto an electric skateboard like what I've got sitting right here that I use now almost every day. Get them onto something that's electric, some sort of electric mobility that is way smaller than a car, uses far less energy, doesn't damage the roads, and is actually a plus for them in terms of exercise, and a plus for the environment. You can save so much money. There's no registration costs, no insurance costs. And every day, your commute might cost you, what, 50 cents, maybe a dollar. That's what I think anyway. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.